Hey everyone, check out this clip from Sam Harris sort of laying out the situation in the land of Israel. Now, I disagree with a lot of things that Sam Harris believes and says, but it's it, I think it's an important perspective coming from a secular point of view. Sam Harris uh, has professed that he does not believe in God and that religion and that those are things that not don't play a part in his life. So hearing his perspective on the situation in Israel is purely secularly based. And so I think that there is value there in hearing about it because of the fact that when a, when a religious person or someone who's of Jewish faith or Christian faith or Muslim faith is is uh, describing the situation who has strong convictions, you can always think that their theology might be bleeding over into the way in which they see the situation. There's a certain value, I think, in hearing it from a secular vantage point, uh, their layout of the situation, because at the end of the day, the the state of Israel is a is run as a secular state, trying to implement policies that are like the nations of the world. That's the way in which they've set themselves up. So take a look at what Sam Harris has to say, assessing what's going on. One thing is obvious, Israel for decades, if it had wanted to perpetrate a genocide against the Palestinians, could have done that on any given day, right? It would have been trivial, tomorrow they could kill everyone in Gaza if they wanted. They obviously haven't wanted that. They obviously don't want to do that now. If you reverse that balance of power and ask what would Hamas do, what would jihadist organizations anywhere do, uh, they would kill all the Jews. And, they've, and they have told us that ad nauseum. The founding charter of Hamas said that explicitly. It looked forward to a time where, where Quranic prophecy would be realized when the earth itself would cry out against the Jews, where, where the, the rocks and the trees would say, oh, Muslim, there's a Jew behind me, come kill him, right? Except for one tree. <laughs> yeah, except the one tree, yes, yeah, that's right. Um, so that, the, the difference in intention, while people think intention is this, is this um, abstraction, intention is the software that everyone is running. Intention is the best predictor of what people will do if they're given an opportunity to do it, right? If they have the power to do it, mm -hmm. if they have the technology to do it. Um, what will a jihadist organization do if it gets nuclear weapons? What will a jihadist organization do if it gets, you know, a, a viable bioweapon, right? We know the answers to these questions. These people have been telling us this for as long as I've been alive and, 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 and in isolated cases, absolutely proven to a moral certainty, their commitment to nihilism and massacre. I mean, the, the, the Islamic State, if, if, if you couldn't, if you knew the details of what was happening in the Islamic State and couldn't understand that these people mean what they say and believe what they say they believe, then you're, you're living on another planet. So anyone who's surprised, the only surprise here is that there was an assumption, and a you know, historically understandable assumption, that Hamas was not as extreme as Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State. Uh, and it certainly seems that some among them are prepared to be that extreme. So we just have to acknowledge that there is a subset of people in the Muslim world who, for whom it is true, as they say of themselves, that they love death more than we love life. We being free, secular people everywhere, Jews, Christians, mo moderate Muslims. Uh, the, there are people who actually want to be martyred and, have their, and see their kids martyred, right? This is not, they're not bluffing. They're, they're perfectly willing to die for the pleasure and, and um, opportunity of killing non-combatants, intentionally killing non-combatants. So the, the moral error that people are going to make now, and they, they've, they're already making it, is to think that when Israel tells people to evacuate northern Gaza, and they don't because Hamas is telling them not to do it, or it becomes practically impossible and Egypt doesn't let them out, etc., um, and they drop bombs tra targeting uh, Hamas installations that have been purposefully put next to civilian areas that will cause carnage when, when Israel bombs them, like hospitals and schools and mosques. When Israel bombs those targets and kids die, which is obviously horrible, 
that is the same thing as Hamas jihadists coming in under cover of rocket fire at dawn and murdering babies in their cribs. It's not the same thing. And that disparity is, um, as far as the, the moral you know, algebra that, that can give you insight into the difference between the two sides, that disparity says everything to me. It's like, I, you know, this is something I recently said on my own podcast, but if you just imagine the Israelis attempting to use their own non-combatants as human shields, right, in any conflict against jihadists. You know, let's say Hezbollah comes across the northern border and the Israelis line up with their own women and kids, you know, putting the barrels of, of their weapons on, their, on the shoulders of their children, thinking that Hezbollah is going to be reluctant to shoot through the bodies of their children to kill Isra IDF soldiers. I mean, it is a completely surreal, you know, Monty Python sketch where all the Jews die. It is not... It, it, it is laughable, it is unthinkable. It's unthinkable at every level of it. It's unthinkable that the, that the Jews would treat their own children and, and, and non-combatants that way, given what they believe about everything. And it's unthinkable that they would think that their enemies would be deterred by that behavior, right? But when you reverse it, as it is the case in, in the real world, we have had to confront, we, you know, we Westerners and the Israelis have had to confront this behavior on multiple fronts in every conflict against jihadists. They routinely use non-combatants as human shields and, and Hamas is doing that now. Um, I think Israel has to figure out how to navigate around that and eradicate jihadists, you know, eradicate Hamas. I mean, it's, it, we, we're, we're confounded to some degree by our, our terminology here. We're, we keep talking about terrorists, and we, we, we had a war on terror for you know the a quarter of a century now. Um, terrorism is a tactic. Terrorism is not the thing we're fighting. We are fighting jihad. And um, what's the difference, Sam? Explain to people what the difference. Well, is. jihadism. Jihadism is the the. Um, the radical core of Islam. It is, this, I mean, it is this principle of holy war that can be justified in various contexts. Yes, there are many, many millions of Muslims, thankfully, who, just, who, would, who would justify it in, in ways that we would recognize as something we could live with, right? So a, a defensive war, right? A just war, you know, just war theory. Okay, great. There are other Muslims who say, no, 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 you don't understand. Jihad is just an inner spiritual struggle. Okay, great. But historically and practically now, jihad has all, a component of jihad has always been you, you convert, subjugate, kill the infidel, right? It's like the, the, the Islam, Islam is a religion of conquest. It views itself as a religion of conquest. It, it expects to win these, these, these contests for believers at the, you know, at the end of time. And it has an expl explicitly uh, martial ethic, which is uh, we have to win through force, right? And we're happy to die trying. All the, however long we fail, we're ultimately going to su su succeed, but we're happy to throw our, our bodies and the bodies of our children into this because this life is a total illusion. It is, has absolutely no value. This is just a, a ante room on the, on the thresholds of either heaven or hell. And the only thing that matters is where you go after you die, right? And only the true believers uh, go, go to paradise. And um, if you kill them inadvertently, if you blow up a crowd of, ki of, of Muslim kids in an attempt to kill some soldiers that are handing out candy to them, as happened in our conflict in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, there's, there's no factor. The kids, the, the, the good Muslims, the, the real Muslims are going to paradise. They're going to thank you, right? No problem. Um, and the bad Muslims, the fake Muslims, the, the, the infidels, the, the, the uh, idolaters, they're going to go to hell sooner, and that's good. That's an intrinsic good. That's exactly what the creator of the universe wants. Um, there, it's impossible to make a moral error when you're a jihadist, right? If you die, it's good. If your family dies, it's good. If the infidel dies, it's good. This is a death cult. And we have been lying to ourselves you know, in the secular West 
that's there's some other logic, some other variable that explains this behavior. It's economics, it's politics. These are the, the assumption is that when you see people behaving in this extraordinarily destructive and you know, psychopathic way, they must have been pushed there by some awful treatment that would explain it. Right? This must be ordinary human rational behavior in extremis. Right? These people have been so tortured by the occupation, by the, the apartheid state of, of Israel, by the open air prison of Gaza. I mean, these, these phrases that are now you know, used reflexively in the media. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying life in Gaza isn't horrible. I'm not saying it's not intolerable. We can talk about that. But there's a layer of this phenomenon and of this behavior that we've been living with, uh, you know, most clearly since September 11, 2001, but it obviously precedes that, which is, is explained only by the religious ideology, right? When, the, when people are doing the unthinkable, uh, again, you can find so many cases where they're doing it without grievance, right? Where somebody drops out of the London School of Economics to go join the Islamic State for the pleasure of killing Yazidis and, you know, raping their women, right? And it's just, this is, and this is what was happening, you know, ad nauseum, right? You had from a hundred countries, right? So this is, so what we saw Hamas do in Israel last week is a subset. It's just another example of that same behavior. Yep, that is a pretty good assessment of the situation. And sometimes Westerners uh, don't do themselves any favors by trying to project their own values and own worldview on terrorists and think that they're somehow, uh, that they're, they're thinking in the same way that we are. I think Sam Harris does a good job over here at sort of dismantling that worldview and expressing it in a clear way that we can all gain from. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And uh, if you enjoy this content overall, I encourage you, please, to hit that subscribe button over there in the corner. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and uh, look forward to speaking with everybody soon. Take care.